Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video. and Welcome to another episode on how to build a WordPress plugin from scratch. In this tutorial, we're gonna add a functionality on our customly generated widget in order to use the WordPress media uploader to select an image and add it to our custom widget. The first thing that we have to do, we have to tap the enqueue.php file that is inside our base directory in order to enqueue the proper scripts that are necessary in order to tap the media uploader. By default, WordPress enqueues those things in the sections that are necessary, like of course the very own media uploader section or the post or the pages, whatever you want to call the media uploader. We don't have that ability in the default section of the plugins, especially if you're running an older version of WordPress. The newer version had some plugins with the built-in functionality of the media uploader, but if you want to do something like that, the only thing that we have to do in our enqueue file, when we trigger the add action admin enqueue scripts, we can, other than enqueuing our default files, we need to enqueue also wp enqueue underscore script and we just need to call the name of the script that a built-in name of WordPress called media upload and this wp enqueue script media upload will automatically enqueue for us all the scripts necessary to run the media uploader in that page. The other thing that we need to do is call the method or the hook wp enqueue underscore media in order to enqueue all the other stuff that are necessary. After doing that we can open our media widget and let's start edit this file in order to add another option other than the title called simply image. Let's tap the method widget that is the one that takes care of generating the widget in the front end. So here we're just simply checking if the instance title attribute exists, we're printing the title in the front end. We can do exactly the same for the instance, let's call it image. So let's write another if statement and if is not empty. Once again, let's check if the instance has an attribute called image and you can call this attribute however you want. You can call it like upload, custom image, whatever, but image makes more sense. It's really linear and straightforward. So if this is not empty, we can echo. And for now, just in my case, just to show you, I'm going to just print a regular image HTML, but of course you can print whatever you want. And here in the source attribute of the image markup, we can interrupt the echo with single quote and then concatenate whatever we're gonna write. And we can escape the URL just to be sure a little bit of sanitization of our instance attribute image. And in the alt tag, or you can write a title tag, you could uh, repurpose the title. You can customize this section however you want, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it like that. Perfect, let's continue. In the form now that we are just presenting a form with the regular input field for a title, we need basically to duplicate this all over again, add another input field that could be visible or not, but I prefer to be visible, and then a little button that will trigger our media uploader. So first, let's duplicate this variable and instead of title we can call it image and check if the instance image attribute is not empty we can return it image otherwise instead of giving it a default value we can just return completely empty because if the image is not uploaded we don't need a default value for the title it's just empty and it's gonna be like that perfect now we can also duplicate all of this once again and here let's replace all these title field with the actual image field. There you go. And here instead of title, we can say image. So I'm basically duplicating the same exact style. The only thing that I need to add to this is a couple of extra things. So first in the class of the input field, I want to give it a unique identifier that in my case is going to be uh, image upload or you can call it whatever you want. We're going to use this unique class in our JavaScript file in order to select the proper field that is this one in this case to know where to put the URL of the image file that the user uploaded. And the other thing that I want to do, I want to create a button and the button, let's remember to put regular type of button because by default a button has a type of submit. So if you leave it like that, it's going to submit to form, but we don't want to do it. Let's leave it button so we avoid the submission. Let's give it a class and let's use the default classes. So first let's use button and then button primary. 
and then let's create a unique class identifier in order to know where the user and when the user triggers this button and activate the media uploader. And of course you can call this uh, class however you want. I'm just gonna call it js-image-upload, something like that. So I know that this is a JS trigger something type of class and I wanna trigger the image upload. Perfect. If we scroll all the way down to the last method, that is the update method that handles the update of the information, we need to do exactly the same. So let's duplicate this instance image, but instead of simply sanitizing the text field, because the title has a default text field, if the title is completely empty, we're returning a custom field, so it's not gonna be empty here, we need to check once again if the image is not empty, we return the image, otherwise we return empty. And we can basically copy paste exactly this thing. So let's paste it here. So if we access our backhand, the widget area, and we refresh, we open our widget here, Look what we had, oh, we missed something. Sorry, I missed the <laughs> title of the button or actually the name of the button. So uh, upload, actually instead of upload, like select image, something like that. Okay, let's go back here, let's refresh, open up, there you go. So now we have the image field and the select image. But of course this thing don't do anything. If I click on this button, nothing happens. If I change something and save it, nothing happens, not here, not in the front end, it's completely empty because I didn't do anything. I didn't attach anything to these two fields. So now we have to do it all via JavaScript because the media uploader of WordPress, it's all handled via JavaScript. And unfortunately it's handled via jQuery, which I don't really like, but it's okay. It's gonna be really, really easy to implement. So let's go back in our code editor. Let's access the my script dot js in our source folder and here we are using ESS or actually here we are using vanilla JavaScript and we are compiling everything with ES6 in Gulp but unfortunately the uh, media player doesn't work with ES6 I'm not sure if it actually works I never tried it but in the documentation is represented always and used via jQuery so we need to use it via jQuery so let's scroll all the way to the bottom after the closing of our window add event listener load and we can trigger our jQuery. Before doing that though, let's remember to access our terminal, point to the folder of our plugin and trigger our goal watch because we're gonna do a lot of scripting and we're gonna write a lot of JavaScript and Gulp needs to be compiled, minified and put in the distribution folder like we did in a bunch of lessons ago. So here, the first thing that we need to do, we need to trigger jQuery only when the document is ready. So we can tap jQuery with capital Q, open and close the regular brackets, say document dot ready open and close the brackets, we can call the function, nameless function that passes the dollar sign of jQuery, open and close this curly brackets and go on another line and semicolon at the end. This is the default triggering of jQuery. So this method is saying simply use jQuery only when the document is ready. Otherwise, let's not do it. Here we can trigger something. So let's say that on jQuery, we want to listen for the document and say that when we have an event on the document with on and the event that we want to listen to is the click, but the click has to happen only to a specific class. And the specific class that we want to check this click event is the class that we specified in our button. And the class is JS image upload. So we say whenever we hear a click on the JS image upload class in our own document, we can trigger a nameless function Then it's gonna pass the element that was clicked and we open and close the curly brackets. And here we can say that first, we wanna prevent the default behavior of the element that by default, we are already preventing it. So the button has a type of button, so it's not gonna submit the form or do anything else. But whenever we're dealing with a link or a button, something that could trigger something in the HTML, it's always better to prevent the default. So we're gonna stop whatever default behavior. Then we wanna generate a variable that is gonna handle these instance of this click. So in our case, our own button, like the event of this button. And let's define a variable called dollar button then it's gonna be equal to dollar this and the dollar this is basically 
it's like in object-oriented programming in PHP. The this, it's a sort of like global, that is not really global, but it's the reference of this instance of whatever scope we are into. So right now we are inside this scope, this function, and the main object of this scope, whatever triggers, is the actual button with this class. So dollar this will reference that button and all the properties and attributes of that very own button. We're writing the variable button with the dollar, not because it's necessary, but just because it's easier for us to understand that this is a variable that we declare. Uh, we could call this variable button or whatever, as the whatever you want. You can call it literally whatever you want, but usually you will find sometimes this dollar used in a way that doesn't really affect the script, it's just to have a visual confirmation that this is a declared variable. Then we need to declare another variable. This variable we want to call it file underscore frame, but also in this case you can call it however you want. This variable will contain all the information of the WordPress media plotter. And we need this variable because we need to initialize the media plotter, give it some attributes and then store it inside this variable in order to use it in our own script. So this variable will contain the media plotter. To tap the media plotter, we need to write wp.media.frames.file frame. That's where the variable comes from. That is gonna be equal to once again, wp media open and close the regular brackets, open and close the curly brackets, semicolon and the end, and now we can customize the WP Media Plotter instance. And I know this is super convoluted, but unfortunately this is how the Media Plotter of WordPress works. We don't have to tap or do anything fancy with this, but in order to make it work we need to, yes, do a double variable declaration, which is kinda silly, but here let's declare a bunch of attributes. So the first attribute is the title, then it's gonna be equal to select or upload an image, something like that. Then we need to specify what type of library we wanna tap in the media uploader, and the library is a, an array or an object, is a list of all the type of elements that we wanna allow the user to select. In our case, we wanna just specify the image type and we need to pass this as a string that represent the meme type or my me type, whatever is basically like the meme type. I call it meme, I don't know how you wanna say it, but whatever. The next one is the, we can customize the button text that it's gonna be inside the media plotter and our button text it's gonna be equal to select image, just to customize it instead of using upload, instead of gonna use place it or the default one, we can customize it. And then the last attribute that we wanna specify is if the user has the ability to select one or multiple image, we wanna say just one, so we can set the multiple attribute just set to false. Of course, the WP Media Plotter has many, many more options than just this, but I don't wanna overwhelm you, and these are just the default one that I wanna customize just to customize a little bit of the experience, but check the WP Codex in order to understand all the way that you can customize the button, the type of library selection, and all other options for the Media Plotter. But let's continue. Okay, after we declare the button, now we need to tell these Media Plotter what to do when the user selects the image. So we can say that the file frame, that is the variable that we declare, we attach an event listener. So we say that on whenever a selection happening, so whenever the user clicks the select button, we want to trigger this nameless function and semicolon at the end of the function and the nameless function will check for the attachment selector. So let's declare a variable called attachment, but you can call this variable however you want, as usual. This variable is gonna carry the file selected by the user, and to tap the file selected by the user, we need to tap the file frame variable, check the state, in order to be selected or not, get the selection of the user, get only the first one, and we wanna convert that selection to a JSON format. So this is super duper complicated. 
And here, I don't know why the attachment disappeared. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. But yeah, this is the var attachment is going to carry the JSON format of whatever first image the user selected from the current state of the file frame. So when the file frame is open, our media uploader is open, the user selects, clicks the button, the JSON format of that attachment will be stored in this variable. So now we can say that the instance of the button that we just clicked in jQuery check for the siblings. So all the elements that are attached or are closed to this very own instance of the button. And I want to just tap the sibling that has the image upload class. And this image upload class is this very own class here. Image upload, this custom class that is specified to the input field that carries the image URL. So by saying from this very own instance of the button, select only the sibling that has the image upload class, we want to update the value of the very own instance by attaching it the attachment URL or by printing the attachment URL inside that input. Perfect. Now the only thing that we have to do, it's actually triggering the opening the media uploader. So we can say the file underscore frame that is the variable that carries the media uploader, open it up with the open method. Does it make sense? Feels kind of convoluted, but it's not. The only convoluted thing is how to tap the media uploader. Everything else is pretty straightforward. After we did that, let's check our terminal. Everything was compiled. Our JavaScript file was compiled. Let's go back in our administration area. Let's refresh. Let's open our inspector. We don't have any console error. That's perfect. Okay, now let's open our widget. If we click on select image, boom, the media uploader, it's open. So if we select an image, for example, this beautiful image of countryside with lake, whatever, mountain, and we click select image that this is the custom button name that we declare in the JavaScript file. If we click select image, look what happened. Now the URL, the unique URL of that very own image was automatically attached to the sibling input field that we declare in the script. Fantastic. So if we click save, oops, sorry, the image just disappeared, the URL. So we did something wrong in the form. So if we access back our code editor here and we scroll to the form method, we check what we did here in the input field when we're printing error value, we echoing the escape. Oh, there you go. This is the mistake. We don't have to escape the attribute because this is going to sanitize that URL. We need to escape the URL, not the attribute. Sorry about that mistake. Okay, let's save it. Let's try it again. Let's refresh, open it up, select image, select this beautiful image, select it. Perfect. If we click save, oh, once again, the URL disappears. So we fixed that in our form. So probably something's going on in the update method. Oh, what a silly person I am. So sorry. We cannot check if the instance itself, because this instance is the old one that of course is always empty. We need to check the new instance for the image attribute. I'm so sorry, guys. So if the new instance with the image is not empty, we're going to return that. Otherwise, we're going to return empty in the new in the instance variable that it's carrying the old one. But we need to check the new instance. That is the one that we're passing with the new information. That was a really silly mistake. So sorry. So let's refresh the page. Let's try once again three times the charms, right? Select. Save it. It saved. The image URL didn't disappear. So let's say test title updated, something like that, save it. No, it didn't disappear. Let's go back in our front end. Let's refresh. And there you go. Look what we have here. We have our custom widget with our custom image. And this is perfect. So it's pretty much it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And if you want, you can check the support me page of my website where you can find all different ways and methods to support me, support my channel and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again, guys. And until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding.